this tutorial. This video lecture is about one of the classification of systems and that is invertible and non-invertible systems. To define an invertible system, an invertible system is a system for which it is possible to design one more system that can produce the inverse operation of that system. For example, if we have a system S that gives the output Y T from the input X T. Now for this system S, we can design a system that is producing or doing the inverse operation of this system S so that again we are able to get X T back. Then this system S will be called as an invertible system and S I will be then called as inverse system. If it is not possible to design a system that could do inverse operation of the other system, then it is called as a non-invertible system. For better understanding, let us look at some examples. Now, to explain invertible and non-invertible systems with example, what am I doing is, I am considering the response of the second system to be x1t. If this x1t comes out to be equal to xt, that means the inverse system is producing a signal which is equal to the original signal. Then this system S is an invertible system. Otherwise, it is a non-invertible system. The first example that we have is this where yt is equal to 2xt. yt is the output that is at this stage. Now, I'll pass yt through one more system which is the inverse system. So, what response I want is x1t should be equal to 1 by 2 yt. I substitute the value of yt here which is equal to 2xt. So 1 by 2 multiplied by 2xt. This 2 and this 2 gets cancelled. So it is then equal to xt. Therefore the result that we are obtaining is x1t is equal to x2t. So this system is an invertible system. In a second example that we have is yt is equal to x2t. What the system is doing is it is applying time scaling operation on the input signal. And here we can see that the scaling factor is greater than 1. When the scaling factor is greater than 1, we get a signal that is compressed in the time domain. To get this signal xt back, what we can do is we can expand the signal into the time domain. So here yt is the resultant signal. On yt, I am again applying a time scaling operation to expand it. So here, since I want to expand it, the scaling factor will be less than 1. So I have taken a scaling factor which is less than 1, 1 by 2, which is inverse of this factor through which we had compressed this signal. So when I apply this kind of a formation, I am again able to get my signal xt back. So therefore, this system is also an invertible system. In the third example, what we have is a system that is performing an integration operation. Now we know the inverse operation of integration is differentiation. So when differentiation of this yt is done, we will get back xt and this system is then our x1t. Since x1t is coming out to be equal to x2t, therefore this system is also an invertible system. Now the next system that we have is a system that is producing the square of the input signal as the output. So this is a system yt with the response x square t. Now we all know that we can find out the inverse of square by finding out or by taking out the square root of the resultant. So here when we take out the square root of the resultant we get xt. Now the twist here is when we pass plus xt through the square it will give the output as x square t. Similarly, when we pass minus xt through the square, it will also give x square t. And when we find out the square root of x square t, we get xt. Now we don't know whether this xt is with a positive sign or with a negative sign. So here what is happening is, more than one signal is producing the same output. Therefore, it is non-recognizable at the output side what was the input. Therefore, this kind of a system is a non-invertible system. Now, next to the signal that would operate with a cosine function on the input signal. To understand this in a better manner, let us take some values of xt. Suppose we have a value of xt when this function is equal to 0. So, when xt is 0, cos 0 will be equal to 1. Next is... When xt is 2 pi, then also cos 2 pi will be 1. Next function could be when xt is 4 pi, then also cos xt will be 
one. So here also like the above case, we are getting same output for more than one input signal and hence at the output side when I take cox inverse 1, it will be non-recognizable for me that which input has produced that output 1. And this system again is a non-invertible system. Now the next system is a system which is S and to this system we have XT as the input. So I am writing here XT as the input. This XT function is not equal to 0. So it is producing some output yt and the value of yt through this system is coming out to be 0. When yt is coming out to be 0, it is not possible to design an inverse system for this input signal because then this will not be able to give us the original signal. So a system behaves as a non-invertible system generally in two cases. The first case is when more than one input produces the same kind of output. The second case is where non-zero input produces an output which is zero. I hope these examples would be helpful to you in understanding invertible and non-invertible systems. Thank you.